You explain it as almost impossible for police to be prosecuted, but so many are still calling for justice for Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Tamir Rice, so many others. I mean, a lot of this has to do with qualified immunity. Is there any hope that officers involved in these cases will be brought to justice? What is your opinion on that? Well, you know, the thing that we talk about in that episode that's been really eye-opening for me and, and I think a lot of challenge, challenging when we talk about, you know, the movement to defund the police is what is justice? And oftentimes we're so locked into this idea that justice equals punishment. And I don't disagree. I think that, like, I've been conditioned in that way, too. Um, what this movement is encouraging people to do is to start thinking about restorative justice, right? Like actually working with members of the community and saying, what is it that you need to feel that this, this harm has been repaired? And in that episode specifically, we talked about the fact that justice really is making sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. It's not just a matter of making sure that there are consequences for the police officers involved in Breonna Taylor's murder or George Floyd's murder. How do we make sure that this does not happen again? Yeah. So that's actually changing what it looks like looks like to um, ensure that our, our communities are safe. Um, and the idea of defunding the police, which is something that we're actually going to actually, we're going to dive into in our last uh, episode of this season, is really talking about taking money that is usually poured into the police, whether it be for more guns and tanks and, and higher salaries, and actually reinvesting that into our communities. Because crime goes down when we have more job opportunities, when communities are better educated, um, drug usage goes down when we have uh, more mental health services. So for me, it's really been like reframing and thinking, okay, there's like the immediate solution of like, let's punish these officers. But then again, to Decoded's uh, true form, zooming out and saying like, what's the bigger picture? Like, the idea that the no-knock warrants are, are have been um, banned in Louisiana is great, um, but we also have to make sure that that is a nationwide process. We have 49 right? other states that have that maybe, you know, or whatever. Right. Yeah, it's, it's helpful for one, but we got to make that big state. But with, but with that, what are your thoughts before I let you go on what's happening in Portland? I mean, do you think the fact that the people of Portland are continuing to fight against police brutality will sort of change this thing in a bigger way or maybe it just is so focused on Portland I mean it's getting national attention but what are your thoughts on it yeah you know I'm I again I'm glad that it's getting national attention but unfortunately this has happened in other places like this was happening in Ferguson in 2015 you know um and so again like big picture we have to look at where are funds being applied why do police officers have tanks and riot gear like those are things that i don't believe uh should be used to engage with with communities especially communities that are not like heavily armed right like it's not a war zone so i'm glad that that portland is getting that attention but I think that people are focusing on that as like, oh my goodness, this is such an anomaly. We can't believe this is happening. And it's like, it's happened before. And this yeah. is like an ongoing issue, the militarization of our police departments. Um, and I just don't believe that that is a proper use of funds. It is really heartbreaking to see how many people have been injured, whether it be journalists or just everyday citizens because of these encounters with the police. And so I'm so glad that it's being captured on film. Um, and I just want to encourage people, you know, we've got an election coming up and I think we focus so much on our presidential election that we forget about our down ballot candidates that actually make a lot of um, decisions that influence our day to day, whether it be who our district attorneys are, who our judges are, who the chief of police is, where money is going into our communities. And so that is really important to make sure that you're informed about um, who is trying to become a leader in your community, where the money is going. And that means making sure that you vote in all elections, not just once every four years. Um, and so I think what's happening in Portland is getting people revved up and mobilized to start thinking about those issues in a broader sense. 